Yo. All right. We did Najee. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. If you listen on the podcast, we rolled right into Najee. Mm-hmm. Or we rolled right into Swift. We're going to do Swift. <laughs> Cats out of the bag. <laughs> Is Swift worth the first? We'll just go ahead and end it right now. Yes. yes. Swift's worth what? <laughs> Cut it up. <laughs> Cut. Getting getting quick and, and to the point. That's I think all these players are worth the first, but it's like how high of a first? You know, that's where we got to figure it out. And first, I guess we got to justify why we say he's a first because a lot of people are fucking mad at Swift. So is Swift people worth the first? Mad at yeah. Swift. Yeah, you both both say yeah. If yeah. you watch him play and you see him with the ball in his hands, it makes it hard to quit him. How can you say no to this 23 year old guy? Yeah, you know? still still super young. Going to be. He is his last name. He's an onomatopoeia. He, I don't think that's what that is. Swift. No. He he's, looks like he sounds. I don't. He's a homophone. <laughs> what what do you what do you think the the ADP was on Swift coming into this? <laughs> probably like uh, five uh, six. You know what? I'll do you one. I'll figure it out. Tell you what it is. It for running backs. Just off the board, like a player drafted. Oh no! Single quarterback. Single quarterback. Probably like. Because right now he 11. is twenty six overall RB nine. That's December DLF ADP. What was he, let's say, August? He was 6 in September. 6.837. So right around 6.7 this last summer. One, one quarterback. Now, we're going right. to we're gonna talk about value in Superflex. We're talking about trade first. Premium. We're talking Superflex for sure. Um, so did you get, you clearly didn't get that back. We no, just talked that's about why Nashi. everyone's mad at him. I mean, you're not, you didn't get it back with Swift. When you don't get your return on investment, you suck, you're done. I never want to have well, you Or again. at least close. With Swift, I mean, you would, by all accounts and purposes, you would say, very bad year, right? Yeah. You know? In my opinion, he was just hurt, and they weren't using him because they didn't want to. And well, Jamal those, Williams fucking leading the league in touchdowns. That, I mean. There's a lot, right. There's a lot right in there to kind of unpack, but still RB24 on the year. Um, I've got 25. All right, RB25, whatever. Oh, it's standard. Sorry. Sorry. <sighs> Sorry. Standard. My bad. Standard. I don't what even know why it's an option. What the fuck is that? I, my whole window, they don't make those anymore. My whole fucking window shut down, all right? You have to order those special. 24. P- PPR. <laughs> Just want regular. Yeah. <laughs> nobody wants to. <laughs> Sorry. Push, nobody wants to push the clutch in anymore. I do. I like I like the fucking. Push Not in this push. traffic. <laughs> There's no hills, though. You're going the wrong way, man. <laughs> I don't go the wrong way, man. <laughs> I don't drive to work anymore, so I'm going against traffic. Luckily, where where we are here. All right, so Swift, RB twenty four. You would say that's that's much better than maybe you would have. I mean, thought. I don't think anybody really likes the RB twenty four scoring. You know what I mean? Not, like, it's not no, like amazing. No, but, but it's kind of a threshold. It sounds of how okay. You gauge he was an RB two of how you gauge things. Right? Sounds better. Like, Say he's an RB two. The the argument was with 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 Pierce was that would he finish as as an RB two? And yeah. it's like all right, all right. So obviously we know Swift is very good already, but still finished with as terrible as it was finishes. If Pierce doesn't play, if Pierce doesn't play a week this next week, he's not going to finish as well, an RB two. Yeah, I mean, what are we going? What, what can you do about that? In points per game, though, I bet he was. Oh yeah, probably. Sorry. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So it, you'd have to filter out like who played more than one fucking game. Like, it's probably a couple guys. Points per game is Swift. Might Swift barely got above fifty percent snaps like on any fucking game this year. Right. I mean, uh, again, one hundred seventy-five point five points, but thirteen point five points per game, which is is not the worst. Um, and you know, throughout the season, like you said, the usage wasn't great. It was like just a very sparse amount of carries throughout, you know, most games, five, seven, five, two, six, five, five, uh, six, eight, four, you know, just, so just very strewn about, but you know, when you look at the points, he obviously was getting at least some targets and keeping you afloat most weeks where you weren't absolutely burned by Swift. So if a player is going to have a bad injured year, that's probably about as good as you can hope for Yeah. Um, to just kind of keep you afloat on most of those games. Now, some of those five, seven, five, two on the attempts, still 16, seven, 14 and eight points. Now, is that what you want from the guy you drafted six overall? No, of course not. But like, it's not absolutely burying you, uh, 
week in, week it, out. It, it wasn't great. I, I was leaning, I was trying to lean on Swift and Kamara in a league this year, and, and luckily it was a pretty deep starting lineup, so I was able to kind of patch together a, enough points to, to almost make the playoffs. Um, ha- had some bad luck with some random things, but like, and then in that league we play for, for a first, and if, if, uh, if week 17 would have fully played itself out, I probably would have won – uh, the first overall pick and Swift definitely helped me in week week seventeen, but uh, he, he he wasn't great for you in your starting lineup. Like it was very inconsistent. No, no, you I, never it was unpredictable well, when the, the the injury reports I were guess, fucking out the wazoo. I guess he'd be what I'm taking saying, off the report, but he was still fucking hurt. And then like you know, just the snap percentages are ridiculous. But when you look at the fantasy points per opportunity, according to Player Profiler. Number four overall. Yeah, you give this man some opportunity, and he's scoring as the RB four. Well, you know? sure. So let's let's back up a little bit there, and and you know you said wasn't super reliable, but and I'm in no means trying to say that he was good this year. He certainly wasn't. That's kind of the point that I'm making is he wasn't, and like no, he wasn't the sixth player drafted overall. But like week in week out, like if yeah, sure, if you're leaning, if you don't have a team around Swift that can that can prop this up, like if he can't be your RB two every week. Because you need, you paid for the production, you want the production, but sometimes you can find the, the guy you draft behind Swift to be your RB1 and maybe Swift could fill in as your RB2. I guess what I'm saying is like, it, it wasn't absolutely atrocious every week for how bad he was it, when you're looking at 13 points per game. Like, I'll take that in my lineup week in, week out. It's, it's not the most unpredictable thing ever. Now, there are some bad weeks in there, but there's bad weeks. Now, when you're talking about the opportunity, yeah, I mean, that's basically, you know, you don't have to look at player profile or to, to, to scroll through the fucking box score and go, oh, he had three double-digit carry weeks. Week one, um, 15 carries, 144 yards, 9.6 a carry, a touchdown, three targets, three receptions, 31 yards. Running back three out of all the running backs. Uh, week 13, uh, 14 carries, 62 yards, a touchdown, 4.4 a carry, uh, four targets or six targets, uh, four receptions for 50 yards, basically. Uh, good for RB4. Week 17, 11 uh, carries, 78 yards, 7.1 a carry, a touchdown, four for four in the target and reception category, 31 yards, and a touchdown. Good for RB3. So anytime that there was any sort of opportunity getting carries, the double-digit carries that happened three times a year, he was – Top three, top four, top three when he got those opportunities. I mean, that's what you're looking for. That's why when we led this off, it's like it's so hard to quit DeAndre Swift because what you saw this week was exactly what you're hoping for with with Swift. Now, Williams leading the league in touchdowns. We're close to it anyway. Not under contract next year. On draft, on, 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 uh, restricted free agent. Unrestricted free agent. Um, but part of the concern would probably be is that, well, if you used Williams like that, and yes, Swift probably wasn't right, kind of battled injuries. So there's a, there's a nick for you. A little, and, and that's the thing, right? It's he for throughout career. usually battling. Right. Last year, sort of same of kind of thing, nicked up. But if he played, it was good. Right. Um, so is it? Seemed like it was worse this year, though. Well, he might have been more hurt. Yeah, I think right. he was definitely not right for a while there. Is, is and that it, could be people's problem. For is sure. it going for a while there, the... The Lions thought they were thought they were out of it. So now, I mean, they need some help. They they need the Rams to beat the Seahawks on Sunday. But the Rams beat the Seahawks and they get, and they beat the Packers. They're in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's 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 a good offensive line there. Seemingly, what they're looking like moving forward is decent. Um, there's there's it, it's just are they gonna give him the treatment of let's say how Javante Williams was getting treated in the beginning of the season with whatever they had going on where Javante Williams is a good player, but like they're not trusting him to be, you know, to, to get enough. Whereas we're talking about Najee Harris, you know, there's not a whole lot of doubt that he's mostly going to get his most games and there can be another guy. That's fine. Uh, you know, we need Swift. I, we don't, we don't need Swift to be in Najee's vein of 20 carries or 18 carries, you know, Swift is going to be just fine getting 
you know, 70, 80 targets a year. And then just give me double digit carries each week. Even if it's only 11, that's fine. Right, Cause you're going to get four catches. And can we just stop vulturing every touchdown right. from yeah. Deandre Swift? And if that happens, the offense is good enough. The offensive line is good enough. There's enough opportunity for him to score touchdowns, you know, and you know, one of the underlying things in those double digit touch weeks are he pretty much scored a touchdown in every one of those weeks sometimes too if you and give him enough opportunities he's busting one off you don't right. have to give it to him on the goal line this week was ridiculous he looked 30 out outrageous like right. just when you're like just coming into this week where he might have fucked you and got you out of the playoffs last right. week because it's basically his worst week mm -hmm. of being uh, unpredictable and unusable was last week or we're talking week 16 because I don't know right. when this is coming out 3.5 so he might have fucked you uh, and you're, you're like hey I'm fucking out on Swift and then if you were watching that Lions game which I was I don't know why there's I watch a lot <laughs> of help it. I just I love it love some of the I can't help it I got to see what the Lions are up to uh, plus they're playing the Bears I've been watching the Bears all year I got to see what they're up to too um, yeah basically then, then you're Swift like god damn Swift is a fucking what he's a G like this yeah. is so good yeah um, so where with all that said everyone's in on a first I think there's yeah. probably going to be some added value to Swift in this offseason. It seems like I would assume we're probably dropping. You think we're going to the third, fourth round with Swift? In startups? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's only RB20. He's only RB9 right now and 26. So that's the top of the third. Yeah, I think that's. I think he's right there within that, like where ETN was getting drafted this past year. And, and for me, I'll happily take him right there. Yeah, you don't have to spend a, a mid first in a startup. Yeah. So there's some value there. For so sure. if we get, we talked about Najee in this kind of regard, we're breaking up the first round a little bit. Um, is he, you're not going to pay a top four super flex startup pick for him? No, I think he's right there where I think he's probably closer to that one six range for Would, me. You'd rather have Swift over Najee? Yeah, for sure. Just because of I just think there's more. Years. I just think there's the age. The age. Well, not just the age. I think the offense is better. I think there's more upside with Swift, whereas you need polar them. opposites of offensive lines. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, which is weird because I mean, um, sure. What, not, not weird in the sense that like I don't even know who the offensive coordinator for the for the Lions even is. Ooh. Um. I'm blank, Jim Bob Cooter. Blanking on the name. It is not Jim Bob Cooter. <laughs> Um, it is a very generic name. Yeah. Um, somebody fill some space while I. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, I th I think I think with Swift, if you can get twelve to fifteen, maybe you can get twelve to fifteen carries and get five targets a game. Ben Johnson. That is pretty generic white guy name. <laughs> ben Johnson. Um, I think if you can get twelve to fifteen carries, then you're gonna have those weeks maybe where he can get eighteen to maybe he gets up to eighteen to twenty, and like you guys said, um. He's not getting vultured on every goal line carry. They're going to see his value go through the roof. He just needs to stay healthy. You know, yeah, you're, you're yeah. getting a dip here because of his health and because of his lack of production. And people are going to be mad at him as a 23 year old dude. He's already being labeled as a porcelain kind of guy. And I mean, he has been pretty porcelain. W w and he's been at the top of startups since he's come out, basically, or at least halfway through the first season. Slightly, slightly, probably down on some people when on the first year out. Like a lot of the times, I feel like he was probably like that in that 2020 class. He was kind of back behind the Dobbins and the Acres in a lot. So he got pushed back there in, I think, a lot of cases. But. Yeah, there, um, that was a good class for t taking running backs in the rookie draft, but like in a lot know, of ones that I was in, I'm not I, saying that's the. I think oh, I got okay. him at one five in hmm. the, in the okay. league I have him in, and then I think I got C.D. Lamb at like one six. I think I made a couple trades to move around and get both those guys. Acres had already gone, and uh, the other there was who else was in that draft? I can't remember. Some good good players. C.E.H. J.T. Oh right, yeah, Dobbins. Yep, yep, Dobbins. All three of those guys are gone. Um, is that that class, right? And maybe I took Swift at one four and CD at one five or something like that. Um, but are you are you? It, it is a little bit of a gamble, you know, because he, he he feels pretty injury prone, but he's so young that it's hard to just say, you know. I, we've just been doing this long enough with okay. Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen was the worst, super injured all the time. All of a sudden, boom. Four seasons in a row, he played all 16 games, was a wide receiver one, crushed it, helped you, you know, compete and get to championships. 
Then all of a sudden, this year, he's back to being injury prone. You know, it's like, no, it just fucking happens when you play this game long enough. But, like, he was so injured, and then all of a sudden, four straight seasons, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Looking at Mike Williams, too. Like, he's got that label, but, like, he's played 15 and 16 games, like, the last three so yeah, something little, years. Little nicked, like, little nicked for this year for the, the bad high ankle. Right, then and then came back year, and right. then sick grab this week. Right. Right. Well, 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 week 17, whatever that was. Whatever right. he was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it played played extremely well, and it's tied to Herbert for at least another two years. So, um, so, so one six for you? You taking him over those wide receivers? I think I'm taking him with them, depending. I think the, the landing spot could help me. With those wide receivers? Yeah. Addison, Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, and Quinton. Be- because I haven't got all those guys and done it yet, I'll t- I'll say I'll take them over them. I'll take them at one f- six. Yeah, I think I'm kind of there too. No, I think once we build the hype up and get in there, I'll probably yeah. say I want N- N- Jigba or Quentin Johnston. I mean, I yeah, know, maybe like you said, maybe with them, I think is probably the best way to say that right now. Yeah, in in that tier, right? Depending on what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, we'll put, landing we'll, spots are because be, because I know where he's at. We'll, we'll put him at the top of the tier. Yeah. The value is insulated with those wide receivers. You sure. know, you, you know that they're going to hold value for a minute. And, Swift. and Swift, if he comes out and gets hurt early again next year, you know, you're not going to be able to touch one of those wide receivers. But if he Swift. doesn't, he'll be right back in the first round. Right. So you got, you know, do you feel like gambling a little bit? The first round of a startup. People are, not being hurt anymore. Are you worried about Swift? Because after this going into 2024, he's going to be a free agent. Nah. Just curious. No, not necessarily. And I think if he put together a good year here, I think I think he'd be a lion, um, because I think he could be really ingrain himself as being a part of that offense if they start kind of flipping from just barely five hundred seasons to you know ten and six or ten and seven or whatever. You know, just flipping the script on the seasons yeah. that they're kind of having and being known for like, hey, you don't want to fuck with the Lions' offense. Like, it's fucking Jameson Williams. It's uh, ASB. It's it's swift. It's this nasty offensive line. The defense is, you know, plays tough. I mean, I know they haven't been great. They, they yeah. had a stretch there where they were pretty good. Um, he but basically is in a contract year this year. Like, like yeah, what you're right. saying, yeah. which is good motivation for him. Sure. I mean, I think, I think if he comes out and plays well, like he could, he could either resign with the Lions or go somewhere that that he wants to go to, and it's gonna pay him and play him you know yeah so yeah. I, i'm not worried about that it, it would no be i just thought, I thought maybe we away yeah. from that offensive line you know yeah and the, and the promise that offense is, show, is showing uh but you know it didn't deter me from drafting josh jacobs this year from where he was going knowing that he's in a contract year no i just in a good just, situation just j- just some banter just a bit yeah. of banter yeah i mean this is this is uh you know i know it gets overblown a lot and anybody who catches a bunch of passes and is really explosive gets labeled as Alvin Kamara but this is this is somebody that can have that that type of impact and career um you know needs 12 15 carries if he gets 20 carries he's going to explode most weeks and the you know he's an outstanding uh pass catcher and you know probably will never should never average you know less than 60 70 targets a game targets a, a a year if if he could stay healthy and Yeah, I mean he's at 56 this year and has and missed right. I think several games. I think games. he's basically been at 56 40 something and 50 something all three years of his um career. So uh yeah, he's been 56 76 56. He's 76. A, so that's a, where he should be. He should be at 76. Like, yeah. He's a game-breaking dude when you're watching him play, it feels like it's about to happen he's about to make your whole day at some and he can and he can in one play and he usually does yeah and if he's super injured and things don't go his way it can be consistent in the usage you know you can't help the usage you can't help you don't know what's going on and they fuck around with the injury report they take him limited practice limited practice limited practice not on the injury report yeah really like no he's (laughs) fucking hurt put him on the goddamn injury report. <laughs> Let him stop sit for a couple Stop games. with this facade that he's not hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're fucking around. And yeah, I hate that shit. They don't care about me. No, they don't care they about you. They absolutely do not. Um There's pretty much no way that the Lions if if not re-signing Jamal Williams, don't re-sign a veteran or draft another running back. How high would they have to draft another running back to knock you off of maybe a little bit of swift and it, you know to at the maybe knock him down from being with those guys to being now with 
Sean Tucker, Charbonnet, Tank, uh, you know, kind of maybe into that next tier of picks. Yeah, I think it'd probably probably have to be if they take somebody day two in that in that two three range. I'm, I'm it's gonna leave me a bit concerned. If they took Sean Tucker or Tank Bigsby, you would then get concerned for sure. Yeah, I mean, then you're like, okay, worst case scenario is there Jamal Williams to score 15 touchdowns and take a, and make him a, a back end RB two, you know, and then that he's not worth what you just paid for him yeah. because you're buying a dip right now. You're not yeah. expecting him to have that kind of performance yeah. overall next year. If healthy, you're buying the dip. This is what you got to do in Dynasty. The recency bias is that there, people are mad at him and are frustrated and ready to move off of him, so willing to sell at a discount versus the, I drafted him sixth overall. I need three firsts, you know? Yeah. Uh, you're buying the dip, and it's always a little bit of a risk buying a dip. That's why there's a fucking dip. Yeah. <laughs> the dip. So, yeah, yeah. you got to figure out You got to figure out if it's at bottom yet. Right. Right. I don't need it to hit bottom. I just need. Yeah, to I agree. No, you're not hit bottom, but upswing, yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. Yeah, is there going to be an upswing still? And I, I mean, he he will be 24 like in a couple months. He's not like going to be couple 23 months, coming uh, into the next season. He'll be 24 in 10 days. 10 days. Yeah. Whatever. He'll be 24 for that entire next season, and there's not. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't get a million carries. He's kind of the you know, like you, we just talked about with Al Naji. Like he's. Austin Eckler, he could, you know, Alvin Kamara, I don't think is bad because Alvin Kamara all of a sudden stinks. I think the Saints just fucking stink and he just doesn't fit to what kind of the style of what the, the, they're, they're, the Saints are now the Titans kind of like, you know, they're muddying up every game. They're playing defense. They got a defensive head coach. Yeah. You know, no quarterback, no yeah. weapons. You know, it's <laughs> well, just. Got, yeah. I mean, the, I, I don't think the quarterbacks are really looking at him when it comes to in the passing game. No, not like Drew Brees, obviously, or even Jameis Winston, maybe through some games yeah so all right well let's get out of here worth the first i can't imagine they'll take a day two running back i think they would be more like a fourth round imagine. running back yeah. Uh, yeah a lot of running backs so they could kind of wait do some other things yeah. although they do have a decent amount of picks i think so all right like subscribe comment below five stars all that jazz um we appreciate y'all five dollar holler on patreon uh, if you want to support more, you can get uh, we got twinsies. Oh, we went double T, huh? Twinsies on the T's. I didn't even uh, see you pushing those T's hard. All right, we got a uh, got to sell these T's. Put them on the other one. Yeah, the one you uh, can't get. Revelrybrewco.com. Get yourself a uh, fresh tea. They're soft. They're comfy, and it's another way to support your boys. So link in the description below. We'll catch you next time for your pleasure. Peace.